All right, we're now at Mr. Howard's grave site. Let me get this fixed up here a little bit. I, I know that we've been here before, you guys, but it's Christmas time, so let's let's see what we get. And we're using the 808. Mr. Charles Howard, Mr. Santa Claus of Albion, New York. Is Mr. Charles Howard here? Can he come forward and talk to me? When he's here, can you say Santa Claus? Oh, I heard some bells, and I heard a Santa, and I, I, I realize that it's Christmas time and like everybody's playing freaking Christmas music, but if it seems relevant, it probably is, <laughs> and it was right after the question. So, we're going to read this off. Before he became Santa, Charles Howard was a farmer on the west side of Albion. He was an active member of the community and pillar of the United Methodist Church. He loved participating in Orleans County's fairs, helped the community, set many world records, including building a model of Niagara Falls with 10,000 gallons of sweet cider in 1928, baking an apple pie that was 12 feet wide in 1929, and making, it, and making a 14-foot tall cake that weighed over three and a half tons. Three and a half tons of cake. Who ate that? We all, did it say we all did? What kind of cake was it? Uh, Charles Howard first played Santa in a school play in fourth grade. His mother, who worked at the Virgil Bogue Home for Dependent Children, most likely helped foster his love of children. This and his jolly attitude made him well suited for the role. By age 11, Charles proved to be extremely creative and began making toys for other kids. He continued his passion for toy making during World War I, opening a business and supporting the purchase of war bonds and toy sales using the sales slogan, buy Liberty Bonds and Howard's Toys and make the Kaiser stop his nose. Before Charles Howard, there was no Santa, standard Santa suit. Charles decided to change that and strove for perfection in his design, which was one of the lasting achievements. He sent his outline to Elizabeth Babcock, a local seamstress, who made his suit. The suit was made out of bright red wool with rabbit fur trim. Howard also designed a large belt and buckle with eight points, which represented Santa's eight reindeer. Howard wore this suit as the Macy's Day Parade Santa in New York City from 1948 to 1965. You guys remember the way he looks? Any of you old timers? Do you remember him? In 1937, Howard opened his Santa Claus school. There's a car coming up behind me right now. Uh, his first class had three students and only one paid the $15 fee, but he didn't give up hope. Within three years, over 40 students were attending the one-week course. By 1954, students from as far as Australia attended. Here, Santas in training were taught suit etiquette, child psychology, Christmas tree trimming, facts about the North Pole, and more. Uh, Howard was so highly regarded as Santa Claus, as a Santa Claus trainer, that he was even asked to be a consultant on the movie Miracle on 34th Street in 1947. The Santa School has since been gifted to others and has moved to Michigan, proof that Charles' legacy continues. There's a picture of him in uh, Life Magazine, 1961. Um, there he is in the Macy's Day Parade. And there he is with his wife, Ruth. And I remember talking to you one time before, Charles, and what did you call your wife, Ruth? What was her nickname? It was Ruthie, right? You called her Ruthie? In, in 53, Charles Howard expanded the Santa Claus School by adding Christmas parks. 
It included attractions such as a miniature train ride, Santa's stable and sleigh, Santa's wishing well, and his toy shop. The park was a destination for families not only in western New York but all over the world. And its peak, at its peak, Christmas Park attracted over 80,000 people a year, fulfilling Howard's dream of bringing Christmas joy to as many people as possible. He errs who thinks Santa enters through the chimney, he enters through the heart. Charles W. Howard. So it's a little slippery up here. Mr. Howard, do you like the write-up that they gave you? Is it a nice tribute? Do you like it? I'm going to try to slip. <laughs> it's pretty steep around here. Alright, we made it up. I'm going to fix the uh, ISO on this camera if we can. Not much. Okay, Mr. Howard. Santa Claus. The people that live in your home now. Are you okay with the people that live in your home now? Your home, yes. Not much happens anymore for Christmas with that home. Does that make you sad? The town is trying to keep your name alive. We honor you during the festivals. We have a statue that is trying to be built to put up in the middle of a gazebo in town. Do you know about that? There is also a mural that has been painted. It's a probably an eight by an eight by six mural that was hand painted by a resident here in town. Have you seen that, sir? What do you feel about it? So I just wanted to come here and pay respect to you. I want to say Merry Christmas to you and to your wife, Ruth, if you would give her my best. All right, and you have a, you have a good Christmas, Mr. Howard. Goodbye, Santa Claus. We'll get back up over here by the sign and say goodbye and see if we can hear him one more time. How many reindeer did you have at, at your house? You just had the one? Yeah, that's, that's what I remember seeing in the pictures also. You had the one around there by the, by the wishing well where the kids would come and they could pet the reindeer. Is that correct? There we go. Okay, Mr. Howard, I am leaving now. Thank you again. And Merry Christmas. Goodbye. And that's it, you guys. My hands are ice cold. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. Lewis Jasper, are you guys following? Close. Do you guys remember Mr. Charles Howard and the uh, Santa Claus School? Charlie, do you remember him? He was your time period. Hmm. 
All right, I'm out of here. We're shutting down. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.